Hello and welcome back everybody. This is Storytales Talk to Twitch Chat. And what this is gonna be about is gonna be about us talking to you guys about pinball storytellers. So let's start with usually what we start with some many times. Justin, you have the best way of explaining this. What is pinball storytellers? So um I don't think I don't think I'm ever gonna get tired of explaining this actually. It's just kinda of funny. Uh pinball storytellers telling a story when you when you have a beginning, a middle, and end, you know where you want to go is pretty easy. Um and there's lots and lots and lots of stories that everyone's very familiar with. Uh and the whole point of role playing, the whole point of D D is you kind of you're you you play a character in a story and the DM is everything else, right? But you don't know exactly where the story is gonna go because whenever there's an uncertain part, you roll a die to see what happens. And so we're kind of taking that concept and we're applying it to stories that people are familiar with and seeing what would happen if you rolled a die instead of just decided to go in a certain direction. So we're, we're taking familiar stories and taking them places that might be uncertain, uncertain ends. And That's why I ask you every time to explain it. You do it great. And that was our that was our starting point, and from there we actually we back, so the like the last episode we started branching out. That's um, there was no there was no die rolling in there, but it's all very uncertain because we didn't know when we were going to sort of like trip over the other person's card, and they were going to suddenly take over the story and it was going to go off in a different direction. Um, and so really, what the show has become about is different ways of telling stories, whether it's familiar stories or made up stories or unfamiliar stories or stories that like, come out of nowhere. Um, and I think it's been, it's a really interesting experiment to see how you can, how many different ways you can tell stories, um, in a format like this, where it's, uh, streamed live to people and have it be really entertaining. Um, and I, I, like every time Chucky and I, we were just talking about this off stream, but every time Chucky and I have, yeah. um, have done the show, we've been surprised at how well it went. <laughs> like we, we always expected it to go well. We're, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Chucky is a, a creative guy. Uh, I've been playing D&D for a long time. I, I've, I've read so many stories. I feel like I have a good handle on, on what makes a good story. But still, every single time we've done this show, it's just gone so well. It's been so much fun to do. I feel like we've been really entertaining. And I, I think that being able to tell a story is actually a really important skill in, in life. Like Even if it's a story about something ha that happened to you personally when you're telling it to other people, um, you're sharing something with them that's really important. You want the story to be interesting. you got to you got to learn how to tell a story. So being a good storyteller is actually an important skill. Uh, and I feel like sharing some of the insights on how to tell good stories with Twitch, especially since a lot of our audience as D&D uh, &D players, is, uh, is really interesting. Um, it, it, and the fact that we talk about how we're going to do it beforehand adds a lot of insight into, into how storytelling works. Uh, I just think the show is, is... The show, for me, is going places I didn't expect it to go. Uh, and it's it's offering resources that I did not expect it to be able to offer. So it's pretty amazing. I am yeah, actually this is the first time he's talking to me about this, so I'm um I'm pretty amazed. I am very happy with the show as well. I have to say I did not expect this was a thing that had a lot of potential. The idea for it was amazing, but it took a long time to set up at first. And the more time it took, the more pessimistic I thought about it. But in the end, I said, why not? Let's do it. Let's see how it goes. And every time we get up um, and do something, like every time we decide on a story or a format, oh, side note, if you want to know more about formats, down below you can press on the Prayers and Cactus tab. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go on my Twitch page, the profile, the stream, go down. Prayers and characters in the pinball storytellers document that talks about more about the formats the different formats that you're gonna see here and i did not think this would go that well for example at first i was um we did not have the prep at all usually we do one hour prep and talk about we didn't have it at all um we didn't have any other idea but basically besides this only the twitch thing but because of the delay we couldn't do it and yeah, I we didn't know how they would go. We improvised, and for when you do it once, you do it twice. Okay, coincidence, it went well. Maybe it's not gonna happen ever again. But three times, four times, five times, every time the same thing. 
we get in here we tell a story we do it with passion and it turns out great because that's what it is all about having the passion to do it and doing it with somebody that you enjoy your time doing it with which is one of the most important things here because without justin pinball storytellers would not exist Aww. okay so um let's start taking at Right after Trekkie finishes dying, we'll take questions from chat. So if you guys have any questions about storytelling or about the show or uh, questions about formats or um, things you might like to see in the future, feel free to uh, type in chat now. We're totally reading it. <laughs> Trekkie's, Trekkie's not dying in reality, guys. I'm just messing with you. He's, yeah, he's fine. Um, my, my, my cough is getting pretty bad. Let's trim back that um, tab of music. At, at least oh. you're not... At least you're not to the point where, like, where you're coughing so hard you feel like you're going to vomit. That's the worst. There are a couple of things I could say about that, but I'm not going to. Okay. Let's go. Kind of gross. Okay. So, um, nothing, chat? Nothing? No That's questions? That's one thing about D&D. No one ever gets sick in D&D. Like, unless it's a, unless it's a curse. Yeah, I I feel I I know this um, again before I've had it with somebody else. Um, basically, people on on D and D they usually give a lot of focus to the bigger things, the uh, the plot, the thing, and they don't think about uh, weather today or uh, terrain there or you've been traveling kind of naked in the winter as a monk. Maybe you're catching a cold. And a cold is not that easy to treat. Unless maybe you have a crack in the part, but you have no crack. We're in the middle of a wasteland. It's um it's the small things that make a campaign usually. See, I do stuff like that when I DM. That's why it's so that's why for me DMing such a time intensive thing, because I have to think about like I, I think about the weather patterns for the area that my players are in and I'm like, okay, well I have it I don't want to decide what the weather is, I want to think about what the percentage chance is that there's gonna be rain, and then I roll that every day. Sometimes every like hour, depending what's going on. And for yeah, for me, DMing is a very time intensive process because I think about all those little tiny things that happen in the real world. I yeah, I, I agree with you, and that's a good way of doing it. But in, in my way, like, I I am um I'm consciously aware that stuff like that could be improved in the campaigns that I DM. But I think it's better to have this these stuff appear. Um, when there's actually a point for it, or maybe just appear randomly. If you think about it, these tiny details do sometimes make the campaign, but overall, it's not a tiny detail. It's, it's the whole branching thing. It's uh, it's better to have uh, a campaign that is rather more well done, and the plot line has an intensive, what? intense would... NPCs and so on, rather than have that, rather than work hours on weather patterns like i understand what you're saying i'm just saying the fact well that it would it would be a different it would be a very specific kind of campaign uh yeah. you'd need to have specific kind of players um the the only thing is that you have a certain amount of hours you can dedicate to preparing your dnd campaign well i don't have any that's why i'm not doing well, anything <laughs> you have you don't have any i have a, a certain number and in that yeah. number i need to can prepare a hold of dragon queen free preferred engineers honor bound i actually had a non-stream campaign as well which is not happening anymore which is great because i wrote all day to honor bound today all day so Ooh, a lot of, i'm excited a lot for of, sunday then yes there's so many stuff like the last two or three sessions combat heavy the session is gonna be so so awesome so awesome if this uh or it's actually i'm gonna mention it on stream as well if um this was a show if this was a like a uh, show on TV, a TV series, this would be season finale. Okay. Okay. So um, let's take questions for chat. There was a couple, a couple of things there for there. Um, There's not so much questions as comments. Like Shane yeah. said, uh, I'd sort of like to see the first format again. I really like the Red Riding Hood story. We really like the Red Riding Hood story too. You know something <laughs> that I wanted to do, Hansel and Gretel, but it's a pretty big story, so. 
but I kind of want to do that. So you might see that. I mean, if uh, Justin has like wants to do it as well, you might see that. But it's one of the things that we want to try. Codex everything has many ways. How about with the GM intervention? The other one interrupts with the correction, and the other player takes over. You will need to figure out when such a correction is like you can make such a question upon what and how often who decides it's that that's the weird thing about um putting me up to a intervention from the other player Ooh, what if it did a timer like a timer could be good. there's gotta be there's gotta be a way of like having a random timer so when the other person like one person starts talking the other person's like rolls a random amount of time and you don't know how much time you actually have so you're just telling a story and then when the time's up you switch and then the other person rolls a random timer and so the other person doesn't know how much time they have so they start talking interesting and what's the what's the overall like there needs to be an end point like the objective um it's an issue like and do you want it to be this do you want to do you want both people to have the same objective or do you want each of us no, to have a different objective it could be it could be completely different it just needs to be an objective so that you know where you're going towards because just telling a story and i mean we could like, me and you we could tell up a story like for today and finish on sunday after on about i'm sure that would not run out of ideas to talk about random stuff that's true um but i'm thinking like like how would we pick an objective maybe oh that's that's actually something we could do we could we could um make up a list of objectives maybe and just do it or with it. we yeah we could make up a list of objectives and roll randomly we could have like a we could do one of those word jumbles right where we take a bunch of random words the chat things and we can just string them together into sentences and that's the objective Mm, that could work well. Um, that's an idea. There's lots of like the thing about the thing about chaotic storytelling is that even in chaos, there's some kind of structure. Yes, yes, there needs um, to be some kind of. Or it's just thing. nonsense. It's like not not actually entertaining to watch. If you guys want to just hear random nonsense, you can just watch my stream. You don't even, you don't have to come to Pinball Storytellers for that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Shane winging it as as a DMing is good, but I would say not do it if you have it. Like it depends. Um, try. I mean, if played a, you definitely played a D and D campaign non-streamed. When you stream a D and D campaign, it's completely different. It's completely different. A non-streamed one is a social thing. Is a, as Neil once described it, it's two hours of dick jokes and then some D and D. Ooh, what if it was two? Like we each had an ending. But you were trying to work towards the ending that I knew, but you didn't know it, and I was trying to work to towards the ending that you knew, but you didn't, but I didn't know the ending. So we would be like randomly I, I don't get thinking that. about. Well, so, like when we told this, when we told the story, we would know what the other person's ending was. So we would be trying to get them to go towards that direction, but they wouldn't know what what exactly we were trying to do. So we would try keep trying to like meta game it to think. Okay, he he wanted me to go to the castle. My ending probably involves a castle. Interesting. <laughs> that could but be then, but but you weren't trying to get me to go to the castle. You were actually trying to like get me to go to the stables because my ending involves a magic horse. Hmm. So I go to the castle instead, and I'm like, it's all wrong. I don't get there. Um. That's, that's It'd be weird, right? We, yeah, that's something that we we should talk about more. Yeah, because we <laughs> try keep trying to imagine what the other person was it's, trying it's to make us do. It's basically a mafia game. It's basically a mafia game. I try and push you to something. You try and push me to something, and we need to figure out where we are pushing each other. <laughs> um, how about taking two familiar tales and combining them in your own way? That's a new idea. That's a new idea. That goes down on the notebook. It could be fun. Uh, what are some good tales? You could do, um, like we could, combine, we could combine Greek tales. Um, I was thinking Hercules and maybe uh, maybe the Labyrinth of Minos. Ah, oh, that's one. That's a good one. I mean, you who do, who wouldn't want to see the Minotaur fighting Hercules? That would be interesting. <laughs> Let's see, you could do. Um, hmm. 
You could combine different genres. It'd be kind of interesting. Like, you could do Medusa plus The Little Mermaid. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that works. So, I guess that's the, uh... Pro not Prometheus. Pa, 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 pa. What was the guy's name? Who? He had a Pegasus. He fought Medusa. Oh. It begins with a P. Theseus. T no, no, no. No, no. Is it is it Theseus? Yeah, it, I think it is Theseus that was the one with who fought Medusa with the shiny, like the polished shield. That's Perseus. Perseus. Oh, Perseus. Is we give the P? Yes. There you go. Hercules in sci-fi setting. That would be interesting. Hercules in sci-fi setting would probably be like the super, uh, like a super soldier serum gone wrong or something. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking of Final Fantasy VIII. The project would be named Zeus, right? <laughs> good one good one that could be something um all of these are good ideas we just need to have how do i put this we need more time right we need more time we yeah, can't like... even get for that one hour meeting almost not each week we've only done it like twice and all of the shows down and it's not the uh, it's not a justin thing or a me thing it's just sometimes it's me, sometimes it's him, and it's like, la like last week, my the the I had an emergency at work, and then uh, my power was out. Like for, so, we set up two meetings, and neither one of them I made in the week before that. Uh, Chucky was late because of something that happened in, in real life for him. It's just <sighs> we're both just really really busy with everything else we're doing. Um, and I know Chucky has very. I know Chucky pretty much spends all his spare time uh, prepping for D and D campaigns, <laughs> and I don't have any spare time. I spend all my spare time streaming. Like I, I carved out twenty hours a week that I spend streaming, and that's about all the t spare time I have. Yeah, and basically need more time. So you might see that in the future. Maybe who knows? I mean, summer is coming again. I mean, winter is. Like Christmas is coming, and then maybe summer is coming, and maybe in the summer, maybe we're more free then. Who knows? Things will progress as they will progress, and we'll try our best to improve the shows in how many ever ways we can. And that's why we're doing this show, this uh, story to talk to Twitch chat, because we're trying to find out the ways that you would like to see the show, or what you would like to see. Okay, so anything you want to mention that I haven't? No. <coughs> I think um, we're good. What do we think on next session's format? Do we keep it secret and talk better? Or um, do we talk about it here? Well, let's see. So we've done every format except having a guest and um, invent invented narrative, right? Yeah. Those are, the, those are the only two we haven't done. I don't think we're ready for a guest yet. <coughs> um, because I don't, none of the people have, I don't think any of the people we've talked to about it are available. So um, that, doing doing invented narrative would be would be uh, interesting, I think. But that's something great work. Or hmm, maybe do a sci-fi. I was actually curious of how a sci-fi would go, in the idea of a um, more a, a bigger sci-fi. A bigger sci-fi. Like have it uh, like for example, you doing a story for me, like we did with Buck. Pack the Master Thief. But maybe a bit bigger. Let's see what happens. Like, example, drop me into a uh, Doctor Who plot. Ooh. There's an idea. Because there's a lot, there's a shit ton of, of books, and some are small, some are big, uh, with Doctor Who plots. And you can just rip out the plot and take out Doctor Who and his companion and see how my personal character would. Uh, react to this and because I mean would he s save the world would he just cower in a corner and try and, and wait everything out or maybe you put in Doctor Who and we see what happens when uh, I meet him and, and so on hmm it depends it all depends interesting so that's something that I'm interested in doing uh, maybe we do that maybe we do something else but Guys, do you have uh, any more questions? If you have any more questions, post them up in chat. We're going to stay for about a couple more minutes and wait for questions from you guys. 
If not, we're gonna finish up. Justin, <laughs> anything you wanna you wanna talk about? No? no, I actually feel very happy right now. Like I, 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 don't, I don't. There's nothing I feel the need to clarify or, or come up with. It's just I feel like the 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 stream is very complete in a way. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, so I think that's that's about it. We we'll finish up here, guys. What store to talk Twitch chat? And oh, schedule wise, um, that's the only thing we need to talk about. Next week, I have a friend who is going to be twenty. So I need to go to his party, which starts at 7 our time on Friday. So that means a three hours when we usually start the show. Do you want to do it later in the night? Or do you want to um, change the day for that week? Um, I can do later. I guess that would just be like mid. That'd be like midstream for me, but I feel like that's almost too late for you. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, would you like to do a Thursday? Maybe like, can you do a Thursday? I can't do Thursday. Thursday is the one day I can't do. Okay. Wednesday is a free day for me. I can do Wednesday. Wednesday. We used okay. to do it on Wednesday. Yeah, we used to do it on Wednesday. So, guys, for next week, uh, Pinball Story Tales is going to be on Wednesday instead of Friday, and that's about it. So, I'll see you guys over for that. And for my, I mean, go and watch. It's gonna be hosted here. Like his Justin's stream is gonna be hosted here. But go in his chat. His chat is awesome, as awesome as my chat. Well, maybe a bit less, but still, <laughs> still awesome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for my own stuff, we have Hold the Dragon Queen tomorrow, guys. We have Honor Bound on Sunday. There's a lot of D&D &D this weekend. Okay? I will be there for both of those too. So. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good one.